I feel like I have a friend back. It's like following me again. Um, so <laughs> this is a really hard problem, right? This one's really tough. So I figured we should start with something that's extremely difficult. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so it's separable because we're in the section on separable DEs. So we should try to separate it. So I guess we have to take this and put it over here. So we'll divide by this and multiply by dx and divide by this. So it's like three things at once, so watch. So we have dy here, so we're just gonna divide by this. So we'll have dy over the square root of y plus y, right? So square root of y plus y, okay? So that's, this stuff we're gonna get rid of it in a minute. So all we've done so far is divide by this expression here. Now nah, it feels full in here, it's good, it's good. Multiply by dx and then divide by this. So it's like we're flipping it or multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So it'll be dx over square root of x plus x. I don't think I've made any mistakes in this class, right? You all haven't had any extra, yeah, I'm, I'm messing up bad last, well, I messed up on Monday night in my Monday night class, but. Not any math mistakes. No, I made math mistakes in that class, but not in this class. Oh, in this class I've made other mistakes? Yes. Oh, okay. Ryan. Ryan, oh, all right. <laughs> so, so we're here. So you, so you divide by this and you get here, and then you multiply by the reciprocal and, and you get here. Any questions so far on this one? What do we do now to both sides? What's the thing we do to both sides? No, 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 what is it? Integrate. integrate, yeah, integral. The integral symbol from calculus, this one here, right? Integrate both sides, right? Integrate, yeah, it's, yeah the integral symbol, so integrate. And this is a pretty tough integral. Um, I think there's a couple ways to do it. I know a really easy way to do it. Um, anyone have any ideas on how to do it? Anyone, any suggestions? You can't do that. Um, oh, you can, yeah, right, that's something that Tony had brought up last time. So now, now I think of you, Tony, every time. Yeah, if it was up here, then you could separate it, but because you have two terms on the bottom, you can't separate it. Good, good, good try. So substitution, so watch. You let u equal the square root of y. Right, let u equal the square root of y. And then when you do this, um, you have to find du, but that's not fun, right, because it's a square root. How do we get rid of a square root? What do we do to both sides? Square it, yeah, absolutely. We square it, so square this all squared here. So we get that. This is just a trick. How do I know how to do this? Because I've done it before, right? That's, that's the only reason. Um, that's how a lot of math is, right? You know how to do it because you've done it before. Mm -hmm. So now, um, we take the derivative. So we use the chain rule, so it'll be 2u du. So 2u du, oh, more people. Hey, Gerardo, you're here, all right. And this is equal to dy dy, so 2u du equals dy. You can sit over there if you want, or it doesn't matter. It's up to you, it's okay, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's easier to see, right? I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're here. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? I think we're good, right? I think we're good now. I think we can make a u sub, we could, we could do it. So dy becomes 2u du, so it becomes 2u du over, right? You just replace the dy with the 2u du. And then on the bottom, the uh, square root of y is just u, right? It's just u, I think, so u. Hey, Giovanni, plus, plus, and then the y would be uh, u squared. Yeah, u squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a really clever integral. Even if you took calc two and you got an a, you might look at this and say, I don't know how to do it. That's okay, that's normal. You'll probably have that happen again in the homework. Again, if you get stuck, you can just message me, or um, if you go to the playlist, you'll probably find all of the harder problems worked out. I worked them all out um, at some point, because they're, they're really good problems. Yeah, there's a lot of hard homework. It's good, builds character. Same thing here. Uh, you know what? This is the only time in your life you're taking this class. Let's go through it again. Instead of U, let's use a new letter. How about W? It's like two U's, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right, why isn't it written like that, right? I guess that's omega, but. W, and then same thing, you square both sides. So W squared is equal to X. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Why, why'd you do that, is this better? Oh, it's good, I like this. Oh, oh this is good, you should leave it like that. Oh, okay, so because I'm, I'm in this class after this. Oh, that's cool, equals, equals DX. Yeah, it's always fun when people switch it around. One semester there was a, uh, there was a desk work right here. There was a person sitting right there. It was really fun. I'm like, do you understand? And I'm like, they're like, <laughs> it was so much fun. So this is 
uh, dx is 2w dw, so 2w dw. And then same thing, uh, this will be w plus w squared. Any questions so far on this one? Any questions on the, on the steps? Good test question, right? If you can do all the homework, you're ready for the test. Like, um, you, you, you'll, you'll do awesome. The challenge is actually doing it all. Like, it's actually getting through it. it takes a long time. Okay, um, I think we can do something here, right? We can pull out something on the bottom, right? The u, right? And we can also pull out a w here. So let's do it. I'm gonna come up here. So we have integral to u, du, show all those steps. This will be u, parentheses. And I guess we're gonna be left with um, one plus, right? So one plus u, right? Do that right, one plus u. Okay, all right. And this is equal to, yeah, I, I didn't know what to say. This is two. 2w, and then this is w, 1 plus w, dw. So these cancel, these cancel. So we end up, we end up here. We just go a little bit faster. So we are here, right? We are here. Nice problem, right? Nice problem. Nice problem. Great question. And again, it's really scary looking, right? I mean, you put this on a Calc 2 test and they've never seen it, like one person might get it right, maybe, yeah, depending on how people are feeling that day. It's, it's just really sneaky. This is a really easy integral, right? Um, we can skip the steps or we can show the work. Maybe I'll show the work. It's a bit silly, but why not? Um, you make another substitution. We've already used U and W. Any uh, suggestions for another letter we can use? K or what, what, someone else said something else. Not that I, Q. Q. I'll, I'll just go with, uh, okay. I don't know why I asked because I want to use Z. But okay, <laughs> let's, 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 I really want to use Z. But all right, let's use K. Let's use K. So K, because K is usually for constants. Q is good too, but my Qs look ugly. So I'll just use K. K equals one plus U. <laughs> this feels weird. I've never used K. So then you take the derivative. So here, what, what's the derivative of K? That's just going to be what? DK. Dark Knight. Yeah. DK. And this is DU. So DK equals DU. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so this one will become uh, 2 DK <laughs> over K. So 2 DK over K. Feels like physics. Uh, this one, I'm just going to leave it because it's going to be the same thing. So you'll see what happens. I don't, I don't feel like doing it twice. Anyone know what this is going to integrate to? This, this, this 1 over k? What does that become? What type of function is that? At natural log. Very good. Yeah, ln. So ln. So dk over k is 1 over k. That becomes ln absolute value of k. So this is 2 ln absolute value of k. But we know what k is. It's 1 plus u. So I'm going to put 1 plus u. Skip a step. So bad. We can add a plus C, but we talked about this last time, right? Instead of adding it to both sides, you can just add it to one side, right? So this is equal to 2 ln, absolute value, 1 plus W. And now I'll go ahead and add the C here. Now, I don't know if the homework problem wants us to solve for anything. Oh, it does. It wants us to solve for Y. So I know that our C is going to change because I've done this problem before, and we have LNs. So I'm going to call it something else, like C tilde. Okay. Just, uh, tilde. Tilde. It's, I think it's spelled like this. Tilde? Yeah, tilde. And it has a tilde in the E, maybe. I don't know. Does it? Is that, how do you say it? Oh. I just heard it called tilde. Til, tilde. 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 It's, like, it's like French or something. I don't know. So, so. So it's going to change. The reason I did that instead of C is because I know we have to solve for Y because in the homework it looks like this. Fill in the box, right? And there's an LN here and everything's trapped inside those logs. So it's going to be insane. This is exciting. One more step. This is 2 LN. 1 plus U. What the heck was U? Oh, oh, way over here, right? This. This was our U, right? U is the square root of Y. Like, wow, what a problem. Um, square root of Y is a really fun problem. I'm glad, I'm, glad I'm glad we're doing this one. Where's W? Oh, there it is. Square root of x. That's square root of x. 1 plus square root of x plus C tilde. I don't know if it has a tilde in the E. I'm, that might be wrong. I, I, I don't know. So do we need to keep the absolute value symbol? Because no matter what you put in for y or x, it has to be. 
You can drop them in this case because, yeah, this is always positive, so you can use parentheses. I'm purposely going to leave them and pretend I don't know that. Kyle has a good point. He's saying you can drop these absolute value symbols because 1 plus the square root of y is always positive, so you don't need them there. But if it was something like this, you can't, you can't say, you can't do that, right? You, can, you have to keep them there. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of them strategically, pretending we didn't know what Kyle said, so, but good. Um, because it doesn't always work, but you could. That's smart, Kyle. I guess we have to solve for y, so I'll start by dividing everything by 2, okay? So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I use this board here. So we have ln, absolute value, 1 plus square root of y equals ln, absolute value, 1 plus square root of x, which is a little bit taller, plus, plus c tilde over 2. I think it might be tilde. It doesn't sound as nice as tilde, though. Right, so. There's no uh, thing on it. You look it up? Okay, thanks. Yeah. I had a teacher once who used it in a math class, and I'm like, oh, it's so cool. So ever since then, I use it all the time because um, it's interesting. I mean, you could use C1, but that's kind of like, you know. How do we get rid of the LN? What do we do to both sides? What do we put there? Do you all know? An, an E. Yeah, it's called exponentiating, by the way. It's a real word. I looked it up. So you exponentiate both sides. So we're going to put an E here, and we're going to put an E here. I'm so glad we're doing this problem because this, this happens over and over again. Like this process is something that you will see repeated over and over in the homework. This is a really good problem. So this whole thing here is the exponent. The E and the LN, they do cancel. They're inverse functions. So you can actually do this, and it's not wrong. This is the absolute value of 1 plus the square root of y. Again, you could drop the absolute value based on what Kyle said, but I'll leave it. And then you can rewrite this as e to the ln, absolute value, 1 plus square root of x, times, right, it's times, e to the c tilde over 2, over 2, over 2. Everyone see why it's times? Everyone see that's the, that's the confusing part, the times for people. So there's a times there. Boom. Very good, Tony. Yes. Yes, because when you, when you multiply these with the like bases, the multiplication turns into addition. Very good. Very good, Tony. Right? You just, it's just this times this. What happens is you just get E. I'll do it again. I'm going to erase this, but I'll write it. Plus C to the tilde over 2. C to the tilde over 2. Right? It becomes this when you, when you go from here to here, which is going backwards, right? It's like if you had e squared times e cubed, it'd be e to the 2 plus 3, which is five, e to the 5. Right? You add the exponents, right? Good, good. Um, this cancels. I'm going to leave the absolute value there one more time. I'm dragging it out on purpose. I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to put this in the front. Um, well, I'll leave, I'll leave it. No, I'll put it in the front. Feeling, feeling, feeling good about it. e to the c tilde over 2 times absolute value 1 plus square root of x. Okay. And again, you could have dropped the absolute value long ago only because this is positive, as Kyle said. But that doesn't always happen. Any questions on any of the steps uh, on this problem? I think we're doing good on time. It's only been like 16 minutes. So, yeah, for one problem. You're what do you do again? Uh, what, what do you do here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you put an E here and you put an E here, right? And these will cancel, right? Are you, are you dividing? No. If you have e to the ln x, it's equal to x. It's a formula. Oh, good. Yeah, no, good, good. Good, Chris. Chris? Yep. Really? Oh, Chris, good. So, yeah, they cancel. So that's the idea. That's the idea. Everyone okay with this part, too? Everyone okay with that? Chris, does this part make sense, too, with the times and, and the plus? Okay. That's, that's a confusing part. I had a student once long ago. Uh, his name was David, and he had a really hard time with that. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he doesn't watch this video. So. Uh, all right. He's a good guy. He is. He is. To drop the absolute value. So I don't know if you know this, um, just in a quick aside. If you have the absolute value of x equal to the absolute value of y. So the absolute value of x is the distance between x and 0. So x and y are two numbers, and their distance from 0 is the same. That means they must be the same number, or they must be opposites. So you drop the absolute value and put a plus or minus. So when you have two absolute values, you can drop it and put a plus or minus. This is not something that's often talked about in like a college algebra class. Usually all the problems have one absolute value. Um, so here you have two absolute values. Sure, you have this here, but it's not going to make much of a difference. So same thing, you put a plus or minus. So plus or minus, e to the c tilde over 2. You're allowed 
to skip steps. Um, but just know that when you skip steps, I look at it a little more closely usually because I'm like, oh, why do you skip steps? And so just make sure it's correct. Yes. Um, before. Mm -hmm. there, why didn't you just cross out e to the ln and then write absolute value one plus square root of x plus c over two? Plus. Yeah. Ah, because you can't. So going from here to here. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just let me just show you again. Okay, so this, this might not make sense because I'm just write down the same thing I had before. So this is one thing, this is an exponent. Okay. So it's times e to the c to the day over two. Think about going backwards, here I'll do it here. I'll write it here, say we have this. This is what I was talking about, that multiplication. Whenever you multiply these, it turns into addition, it becomes Do you see it? It's because when you multiply these, you add these. It's like if you had e to the x times e to the y. That would be e to the x plus y. So that's why I couldn't do that. I had to separate them first before I got ready. You see it now? Yeah, see you do? It. Oh, good. Okay, good. It's, that's the tricky part. That's really tough for people. And this happens a lot, right, in the homework. Okay. Um, we need to come up with c at some point, right? So just call this c. So 1 plus square root of y is equal to c, parentheses, 1 plus square root of x. You can do that, right? You can just rename stuff. Because you don't know what c tilde is. You don't know what c tilde over 2 is. You don't know what e to the c tilde over 2 is. You put a plus or minus there. It still could be anything, right? So just call it c. I usually wait to the end to call it c. Okay. And again, how do I know to do this? Foresight, right? Like right here, um, when the... When the I knew why was trapped inside the log, so I knew to do that, right? And plus the homework wants us to do this. Like if it said implicit solution on the test, if it says implicit, you just stop here and circle it and you're, you're done, right? But because they want us to solve for y, that's called, uh, do you remember what that's called when you solve for y? Particular. No, no, uh, not implicit. What's the opposite of implicit? Explicit. explicit. So we got an explicit solution, yep. Oh, erasers. All right, so let's finish this. Subtract the one, square root of y equals c, parentheses, one plus square root of x, minus one, minus one, minus one. Yeah, this is tough. I signed almost every single available problem, by the way, uh, if, 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 even if it doesn't look like much, but it's a small book, right? So, um, so it's a lot of homework. If you can actually do that homework, you're really good at this, like really good. What's the last step? What's the square both sides? Yeah, good. Just square both sides. Very good. So we get parentheses c one plus square root of x minus one squared. You could keep going and do some fancy stuff here, but I'll leave it. If you're wondering what I mean by that, you could distribute the c and combine it with the one. C minus one, call that k, right? But it's good enough. Yeah. So the e to the c over two became just c because here. Yes, and I should specify that. You don't have to specify it, but uh, yes. Because it could be anything, so you just rename it. Okay. You're allowed to do that with constants. We left it where it points hmm? We left it the way it was where it points out. If you left it like this, yeah, like minus one, some comments. Like probably like, <laughs> I'd feel bad, but like, yeah. Because I mean, it's just really sloppy. Like, it's not wrong though. Right, I'd probably write some stuff. Like, please don't do this. You know, please. <laughs> please don't. Yes. So in the end, it wouldn't matter if you got a different answer by putting your C on the other side, right? That's a good, that's a good question. Are you hearing what Aislinn asked? Uh, in the end, it wouldn't matter at the end if you put your C on the other side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Good question. Mm -hmm. The homework is pretty good about being lenient and, and, and uh, yeah. Anyone like this problem besides me? It's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a hard way to start the class. Like, all right, it's one of the hardest problems in the homework. Go. Oh, it's good. It's good. We skipped all the easy ones. Well, they might not be easy, but. All right, let's do something else. Um, hmm. Maybe we should do one more. Let's do one more. I, I mean, we can, spend, we can spend two hours. We can spend three hours doing these, right? But let's do one more, and then let's push to the next section so that we can, so I can show you another technique. That way you can actually do homework from 2.2 and 2.3 uh, during um, you know, the week. I won't see you. I was thinking, I guess number 16 is a good one. Um, let, let's try it. 16. There's a video for all of these, but let me just show you how to do it. It's, it's worth it. dy dx equals 
e to the square root of x over y. e to the square root of x over y. And this is an initial value problem, so they give us an initial condition. Uh, y of 1 is equal to 2. So, they, so this is a nicer problem. By the way, on a test, since we haven't had a test yet, so you're probably like, oh no, what's it like? Usually these are worth like at least 20 points, right, these DEs. So you get a lot of partial credit. The most important thing is that you start it the right way. Like, if you see this on a test and you know it's separable and you try, you'll get a lot of points, right? The worst thing is like, if you think it's something else, like, oh, it's a Bernoulli, and then like, oh, game over. So, okay, I think we can separate it pretty easily, right? What type of multiplication can we use Cross, yeah, we never get to use that. Very good. I love, I don't know why it's fun. It just, right, so this times this. And then uh, this times, I like cross multiplication because I remember when I learned it, I understood it. I was like, oh, I know how to do that. You just cross and you put the things there and, and everything is good. <clears throat> what, what do we do next? What's the next step? Integrate, yeah, integrate, integrate, integration. So this part's really easy, right? The y, there's a one there, right? So we'll just get um, y squared over two, I believe. Yeah, y squared over two. Uh, I'll worry about the c later. Uh, this, e to the square root of x, fun times. Any ideas like how to start it? Really? I don't know. I mean, you still have to use the square root of x in there, but I think you have the coefficient. It's being the um, derivative of the square root of x. Oh, what do you mean? Like the square root of x. Uh huh. The derivative would be the coefficient of e to the x. And then you also have to be the square root of x. Oh, I don't know. Would that work? I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. I thought it was the only one. I just mean that you derive the it's being raised to and have that as the square root of x. Right. Yeah, so maybe let this be you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes, yes, I think that's what you're saying. Yes, yes, so he's right. So let, let you, I'll, I'll do it, where should I do it? Uh, I'll do it here. Uh, I'll do it here. So let you, this is weird. I don't know why I did that, it's too late. So let you equal the square root of x. That's a good step. Like, if you were like in a room and you were trapped and you had no food um, and you had to get out, uh, that would be a good first guess. Like someone said, do it or die. Like, you'd probably do that. How do you get rid of the square root? What do you do to both sides? Square it. Yeah, so just like before, right? Very similar, very similar. Something interesting is gonna happen in this problem. Take the derivative, so we get 2u du equals dx. Okay, so now, what happens here, let's just focus on this one, is it becomes, it becomes, let's see, so dx, dx is 2u du. I'm not going to pull the 2 out. I'm going to leave it in on purpose. Why? Just because I think it might be easier. So 2u du, all, all I've replaced so far is the dx with 2u du, 2u du, 2u du. And then we're left with e to the, and what would go here in this case? u. u. Very good. u. So that's our new integral, right? 2u times e to the u times du, so two, it looks really weird. I don't know why it looks so weird. Let me make the du smaller, there we go. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you might be thinking integration by parts. That would work, certainly, right? Uh, I'm going to avoid integration by parts and show you an easier way, okay? So whenever you have like a power of x or a power, a power, something to a power times an exponential, something to a power times a cosine, or something to a power times a so whenever you have something like x squared e to the x or like x squared sine x, I forgot the dx. So stuff like this, you can take a shortcut to parts. You can use what's called tabular. So let's use tabular. So let me just show you how to do it. So basically, um, I think I could squeeze it in here. You pick the piece that you're going to differentiate. So you need to pick something that eventually is 0. So 2u. If you keep differentiating that, eventually it's going to be 0. And then the other piece, you're going to keep integrating it. Okay, so you write down a piece that is eventually 0 and then you write down a piece you can integrate. That's the rule, right? One of the pieces has to be eventually zero. Then you just start taking derivatives. The derivative, uh, what's the derivative of 2u? What would that be? Two. two, yep. And what's the derivative of two? Zero. Zero, so then you stop. 
Okay, so again, one of the pieces has to eventually be zero. So like two u cubed would have worked, right? This is super powerful, right? This will save you hours on your life. Uh, and then you just keep integrating e to the u, which is really easy because you just get um, e to the u. Yeah, so it's e to the u, e to the u. So you pick uh, the piece to differentiate and you just go straight down, boom. And then you pick the piece to integrate, go straight down. Then you always start with plus. So it's plus, minus, plus. It's always plus, minus, plus, always. Right? And then you're done, right? Then we're done. Now we just draw arrows. And you just follow the arrows to get the answer. So let me go over it again. We'll, after this problem, maybe we'll do another example of this, because maybe you've never seen this. It's called tabular. So you pick the piece that is eventually zero after repeated differentiation. So two u, so two, zero. You pick a piece that you integrate over and over again. Boom, boom, boom. And then plus, minus, plus. Draw arrows. Here's the answer. So this thing is going to be, it's plus. It's all times. It's all be multiplied. So 2u e to the u. So 2u e to the u. Right? That's just following the arrows, right? That u is like hanging there. Sorry. There we go. So following the arrows, right? So 2u e to the u. And then the next one will be minus. Minus 2 e to the u. And I don't know what's going to happen with the c. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Um, I mean, we have a 2 here. You can call it c tilde or you can call it c. Um, I don't know what's better. Um, I'm going to call it c tilde just to be cautious. Because we're going to have to multiply it by 2 at some point. So it won't really, yeah. Do you have to integrate the second part of this? Yes, you have to integrate this one. I mean, the, the, when, yeah, when you write it back in, don't you have to integrate the second one? No, that, that was the integration. That's the shortcut. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, we're done. That's it. Weird, right? I know. So basically, you do this, and then that's the answer. So this is equal to this. Ridiculous. I will do, we'll do another example. Let me go over it again, and when we're done, I'll do another one. Yeah, it's really. There's another way? Yeah. Integration? Parts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Part, parts. I'm mixing them up. Yeah, you can use parts, too. This is the shortcut to parts. Yeah, so you can use integration by parts also on, on, on this one, right? You, the whole UDV, remember that? The integral of UDV is UV minus the integral of VDU. You can use parts. So again, uh, tabular, you pick one that is eventually zero. You pick one to integrate, differentiate, 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 plus, minus, plus, draw arrows, right? Boom. All right, let's, let me come over here because I'm running out of room. Um, let's go ahead and replace U with the square root of X. So we have Y squared over 2. I should have just multiplied by 2. It's too late. 2 square root of X e to the square root of x minus 2e to the square root of x plus c tilde. Beautiful stuff. I guess we have to um, find c at some point. You could find it now, but I think it might be better to just go ahead and solve for y first. Right? Let's, let's maybe let's just do that. Um, to solve for y, I guess we can multiply by 2, right? And then take the square root. So we'd have y squared equals 2 times 2 is 4. e to the square root x minus uh, 4 e to the square root x. E to, and then it's going to be plus 2 c tilde. Hmm? Yeah, you can just call that c. Yeah, that's what I, I would have done that. If yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah, just call this c, right? So rename it and call it c. Let's take the square root. So you get y equals plus or minus, right? When you take the square root of a variable, you get a plus or minus. Square root four square root of x e to the square root of x minus four e to the square root of x plus. Let's just call it c. Let's just call it c. I'll pause here and let you catch up. The next step is a bit tricky, okay? Because we have to determine if it's a plus or a minus. I'll show you how to do that, so. Yeah. This problem is, yeah? And this when you were explaining like C tilde, I feel like is there a difference between just C and C tilde? No, it's just whatever, no. You could have just called it C, then you get two C, and then you can just call it like C1 or so. You can always rename stuff. You K, C, or common letters. Mm -hmm. Don't call it X. <laughs> That'd be bad, or U. <laughs> Or Y, yeah. Yeah, just, you can, you can use C1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, 2C just stays C because it's infinite. Okay. Yeah, so I, we just called this C, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You can say it, but it's not necessary. You, you didn't even have to do it actually. You could have just not done it. I think I've done this problem both ways. I've left it as 2C, and then I've, I've solved for C, and I still get the same answer. I think. We'll find out. Right, so. Whew, now we got to use our initial condition, right? So we have to plug in 1 and set the whole thing equal to 2. By the way, if you set this whole thing equal to 2, you're going to have to use the plus, right? Because there's no way. This is, this, is, this is positive or zero, so if you have a negative sign here, you won't be able to get negative two. So we're going to use the plus. So y of one is the square root, is the square root of, let's see, so plugging in one for all of the x's. So it'll be four, square root of one, I'll just, I'll just put square root of one, e to the square root of one, minus four, e to the square root of one, plus c. Didn't skip any steps. Oh, and that's equal to two. two. Thanks, Robert. Two. To two. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we can rewrite this. By the way, everyone see why it's the plus, right? Because you can't have a minus here, right? Because then it won't be, it won't, it, it, you know what? I can do this. Watch this. Let's just try to like put a plus or minus there. I bet it won't make sense. Well, well, let's not do that, no, because you could probably square it and get rid of it. But it doesn't make sense because this is a positive too, so this has to be positive, right? So now we get, I think these cancel, right? So we get the square root of c equals two because this minus this is zero. And then to finish, um, what do you do to both sides to finish? Square them. Yeah, good. Square them. Good. Square both sides. So you get c equals 4. So there's our c. Mm -hmm. The last thing to do is take the 4 and just put it back in here, right? Just plug it back in. So let's see. We get um, y equals, and again, it's the plus, right? So square root. <gasps> I see something we can do to make it better, maybe, but it's not necessary, I think. I think we can just stop here, but this can be simplified, right? You can pull out a four, right? And then the square root of four is two, but let's be just a little bit lazy since this took us so long to do. So it took us like 18 minutes or something. I'm looking at the time, like it's been 36 minutes. We've done two problems. So yeah, it takes a while. At the end of the course, when we get to series, we'll do one problem. It'll take 45 minutes. So those are fun. They are. They are. They're easier than this. Uh, okay, good. Any questions? Any questions on this one? Anyone have a computer? Anyone typing it in? Are you typing it in? Okay. Any questions? Any questions on this one? Any questions? Who here has never seen uh, this method before? This method. Okay, maybe I should go over it then. Let me just do an example of that. Um, I'll do it here. I can do it here. Check this out. So, let's say you have, let's just say you have an integral like, um, I don't know, should we make it uncomfortable? Yeah, let's make it uncomfortable. Let's put a trig function in there. No one likes that. I don't like it. x cubed cosine 2x. Yuck. So you can use integration by parts here, but you'd have to use it three times um, to do this problem. So it would take a very long time. So instead, you can use tabular. So whenever it's x to a power times cosine sine or e, those are the most common situations where you use tabular. You can probably use it in other situations, but I mean, it just doesn't come up that, that much to make much of a difference. So one of these factors is eventually zero after repeated differentiation. That's this one, right? So you write it down, and that's the one you're going to integrate. So you write it down. And then you just start taking derivatives, right? So the derivative, what's the derivative of x cubed? Would that be 3x squared. squared? And if you do it again, what do you get? 6x, and then again, what do you get? And again, what do you get? And then you stop, right? You stop at zero. You can keep going forever, but then it won't help. <laughs> or you just get zero, 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 so. When you integrate cosine 2x, you just have to integrate cosine, and then you divide by two. I think we talked about this before. So let's see, this is tough. A function whose derivative is cosine would, would be sine? No, just sine, right? Just sine. Yeah, because we're integrating cosine, and then you divide by two. So you take this and just differentiate. 
Again, when you're integrating this, I, I picked a hard one on purpose. I shouldn't have done that, but it's too late. So integrating cosine, you get sine. When you integrate sine, you get negative cosine. Yes, Tony? So we're deriving the x cubed and integrating the cosine? Yep. So you differentiate this one, integrate this one. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. So tabular, you pick one that you differentiate, and then you pick one that you integrate. Let's do it again. Integrating negative cosine is going to give us negative sine, right? Negative sine 2x. And this time it will be over what number? No, 8. Ah, I'm glad I asked because we're multiplying. All right, no, it's good. But no, I forgot your name. What, Michelle, okay. I was going to say something else. Okay. Oh, did you do it again? When you integrate negative sine, what's that going to give you? Positive cosine, very good. Positive cosine. This time it'll be cosine 2x over what number this time? 16. 16, very good. 16. 16. Let me, let me go over it again. It's, it's worth doing. This is very useful, right? This is extremely useful. We, we will use parts. There's, uh, there's one in the homework where you have to use parts, like tabular won't work, right? All right, so you pick the piece that after repeated differentiation is eventually zero, and then you just keep differentiating it. And then you pick the other piece, and then you just keep integrating it. And do you remember what symbol to start with? Is it a plus or a minus? Plus. plus. See, that's the most, this is the fun part. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Well, the fun part is the next part. It's writing the answer down. And you can draw the, what do you draw? The, the arrows. Yeah, that's the, for me, that's the, that's the boom the answer, boom the answer, boom the answer. I love that. It's like missiles. I don't know why I think that, but it's just, yeah. And then you just follow the arrows and multiply. And that's the answer. So we have to be very careful here so, so that we don't mess up. Uh, what a beautiful problem. And then you, you can do this in like two minutes. Like once you know how to do it, it's like boom, 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 you have the answer. This times this will be uh, one half x cubed sine 2x, sine 2x. I haven't made any mistakes this, this semester, so it's really good. No, I'm not going to do it. It'd be really nice if I could have a whole semester with even just one test. Like, no mistakes. Minus three fourths. Three fourths. Three fourths. It's supposed to be a plus. What, what, where? <gasps> no, 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 I didn't see it. Yes, because minus and minus is plus. Yeah. What'd you say, Tony? What was <laughs> Nothing. I can't believe that. that. That's ridiculous. Oh my god. Where's my wall? No, it's, no, it's just. What's, what's your name? Oh, oh, it was, oh, it was you. Oh, oh, Ryan. I was waiting for that. You were? I saw it. Is there another Ryan in here or no? Okay, just you. Okay, good. So I don't mess up and give it. Okay. So then wouldn't that make the uh, 6s also, x also a minus? Yes. Yes, it would. Yes. Right. So this one would be a minus. Yes. Very good, Kyle. Right, so minus six eighths. Thank you, Ryan. No, it's good. It's good. Minus six eighths. <laughs> I should just not say anything anymore. <laughs> this is ah, 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 ah. Six eighths can be reduced to what? Three fourths. Three fourths. Falling apart here. Three fourths. Three fourths. Three fourths. And then the last one would be. Would the last one be plus or minus? Minus. Minus. Uh, uh, three eighths, three eighths, cosine two x. What's missing in this problem? What do you have to add at the end? Plus the plus c. Yeah, very good. Plus c. That would be that would be the answer. I can't believe I messed up. <laughs> this is so bad, huh? Right after. I know. And then what usually happens is I'll make a mistake, and then I, it's the chain reaction. I'll make like two or three in a row. That's yeah, one semester I made like, I lost four points in the last five minutes of class. Yeah, so, any, any questions? We're taking derivatives on this one, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. not integrating. Integrating? Mm -hmm. And so when you integrate, you divide by the number. Do you know why, or, do you want me to show you really quick? I can't remember, but. Okay, I'll really quick, fat, just quick, check it out. Super fast. Say you had to do this, right? You would let u equal 2x. So then du 
is 2 dx. dx, yep. Then what do you do? You have to make this look like this. So what do you do to both sides? Divide by 2, very good. Aislinn, very good. So you get this, right? And then dx is 1 half du. This is 1 half du cosine u. A function that whose derivative is cosine, because we're, we're integrating, right? So sine? Yeah, sine. Sine. Yeah, sine, sine. So it's 1 half sine u plus c, but u is 2x plus c. So basically you're dividing by 2. Worth it. It's worth it. Worth. It's worth it. For sure. This is super useful. So in Calc 1 and Calc 2, depending on your teacher and all that, well, in Calc 1, you definitely show the work, right? Calc 2, at least in my class, I, I usually say don't show the work, please. Uh, but some people, you know, that's how you do it. That's how you show the work. But you just start dividing. Same thing if you have like e to the 3x, right? If you have e to the 3x, you just divide by 3, right? It's just e to the 3x over 3. You get really good at calculus in this class. Uh, like really good, right? Because I mean, look, this is just one problem, right? Look how much we did, right? And one problem, like you become so good at math. Uh, the sad thing is, this might be your last math class, right? Yeah. It's not? Oh, good, Kyle. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I'm okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but then after that, then, then maybe you're... Oh, you were getting a physics major? Really? Oh, yeah, you'll do a lot of math. Oh, it's really good. It's hardcore. Wow. Wow, it's good. It's good. Um, any questions? Any questions? So derive on the left and integrate on the right. Yep. So you differentiate on the left, integrate on the right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the trick is, Gerardo, that this has to eventually be zero. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the case where you would have to use integration by parts, that would be where neither would eventually get to zero. Right. Right. Or a really uncomfortable case like x ln x. Right. That's eventually zero, but do you really want to integrate L and X? No, I mean, you could do it. You might have it memorized, but like, <sighs> then you have to integrate it twice. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. Yeah, something like this, you would use integration by parts. Integration by parts. Maybe there's one in the next section where we can use parts. I kind of want to go to the next section just to, just to show you something new. All right, let's do it.